Hi, my name is Karen Inglis and I'm here to give you a demonstration of some software called PubCoder. Um, and it's some software I've discovered recently which is fun and exciting if you want to create your own children's picture books that you can then convert uh, for tablet, for Kindle and for various other formats. You can even create apps with them, uh, although I haven't gone as far as doing that. Um, and really today I just wanted to give you a very simple taster um, uh, demonstration of it so that you might want to then go and have a look and I believe you can take a trial for a month uh, for free uh, so it may be something that's worth looking at what I would say is it's very much aimed at somebody who's used to working with things like Photoshop um, that kind of thing. So you have to be slightly familiar with moving around um, one of those sorts of interfaces. Um, the other thing I would say is I'm presupposing if you're going to do this that you've already got your digital assets already somewhere. So for example you'll have all of your um, images in a file and if you've got any recording if you want to do read aloud and it's very easy to do that uh, with this thing um, that you've also got those audio files pre-recorded somewhere and personally I do mine on GarageBand it's very easy to do I taught myself um, so just to put that one in as well um, before I start to give you the demo I'll just show you a couple of pages from something I've mocked up here this is the sort of early prototype of my next Ferdinand Fox book which I'm sort of doing for fun really um, and let me just give you a couple of preview pages just so you get to see what it can do and then I'll do a demo we'll put the book together so here we go I click read aloud Ferdinand Fox and the Hedgehog I hope you can hear that that's that's where I'd already put the narration in um, I'll come off that preview page now uh, and I'll go to uh, this next one uh, hit preview and here I'll do read aloud. Ferdinand Fox trotted down past the park where the seesaws and swings stood still in the dark. His magnificent tail sailed along in the light of the street lamp above which lit up the night. And then the other great thing, and I've just done one example of this, is that the child on the iPad taps on the fox. Fox. We hear the word fox. Um, so that's just to give you a little idea of what this software can do but I thought the best thing to do would be to now let's do a walking demo of creating the book again and um, I hope this is going to work. I will pause from time to time so bear with me if it doesn't all fit together exactly right but the first thing you do is you open up this software which is called PubCoder. You can see it up here and you can see the icon for it down here. Um, and so I go to, I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to say create a blank project and I'm going to call this um, Ferdinand Fox Demo. Author is me. Oops. Publisher. Whoops. Well said. Press. Um, well said. Press. Okay, so then we go to next. Um, it then asks you what format you're going to go for. Um, I hope I'm doing this in the right order. So I'm going to say I want it for iPad. But there are, as you can see, there are all these other formats you can choose to, to make it for. And you can add those additional formats later on once you've done your base one. Um, so I'm going to go for iPad and I want it to be landscape and I want it to be in English. Um, the other thing about this whole, whole project is that I mean in fact I have a rhyming book which is absolutely no good for um, translation but if you are, have got a book that can be translated you can then create co-editions um, using this tool uh, but I'm just going to stick to doing something in English so and I'm doing the EPUB for iBooks so I then have to save it on my desktop um, so I'm going to call this Ferdinand Fox 
Fox's demo uh, and I will save this to my, I'll save it actually in this folder, pubcoder demo. Okay, so I'm going to, f and, and the file ending is called, as you can see here, SC project. Okay, right, so what you need to do to start with is you need to import all the things that are going to make up your book. Um, and over here they have uh, what they call assets, objects, and layers. Now what you want to do is to begin with to bring in your images. So you, I'm just trying to remember here, you click on this and you, as you can see, it's very intuitive, import from disk. So what I've done here is I've, before, a bit like um, Blue Peter, I've gone in and I've brought in all of the files that I'm going to need from for this project. So I'm just going to select them all here. They're all JPEGs. And I'm going to do Open. And as you can see, it goes incredibly quickly. And hopefully, they're all going to appear here. I hope. OK, here they come. Yep. So there you can see I've imported my images. Now, because I'm doing read aloud, and you may or may not be doing read aloud, um, I now want to import my audio files. So I go over to audio here, and I press over here for audios, and pub code demo, audio files. Uh, now these are my read aloud files. I click open and as you can see they all come in very quickly. Um, what I've forgotten to do for both of these are because I just want to demonstrate to you so I've, I've gone back to the images over here and I'm going to import that word cloud bubble that you saw earlier. So I go import from disk and I go to um, I think I just had them sitting outside here we go here we go there's that image of the word bubble so that's going to come in here so that's come in and then from this drop down menu I go to audio and I'm going to go down here and import the audio file that goes with it which is here that's the one I recorded on GarageBand Okay, so now we're going to start building the book itself by putting the images in. Now there may be a quicker way to do it than I'm going to show you. It's possible you could just put them all in in one go. I have a feeling you can, but um, let me just try this. So we're on the front cover at the moment, so I've got that selected. And what you do is you literally drag the image across. And as you can see, it comes here and you pop it into place and there's a way I think of selecting it and clicking fill object just to make sure it fills the space correctly so that's my first image in place I'm now going to go down here and go to my next um, page and because I've re I've numbered these all in advance um, this will be fairly quick for me to do and I've cropped them by the way you'll see why in a moment so I bring this one over and I put that in place there and the reason I've cropped them like this is because I'm not a designer and I, I just really want to get my text in either side I mean you can put text on top and layer the text and everything but I'm just going to show you very simply how you would then add text above this so you double so you go so you then go over to um, objects and you click on text and I think you double click on it and you come over here I think but I can't quite remember but then you'll see that maybe you bring the text box over there yes that's it um, so you come over here and you double click now what I've done is I've got open uh, in another window a word document which is the um, text from Ferdinand Fox's Big Sleep and I'm going to try pasting it in I think I can do this so I've already select control uh, copy there um, so if I go into here and I use command V it lets me paste it in and then what I'm doing here is I'm selecting it it's all very intuitive um, I'm then giving it as I say its font size is 22 and I think it's bold I go for and it is font family Georgia held um, a serif 
time fa typeface works best. Um, and then I put apply changes in. Let's just see how that looks. Apply changes. I think you just close the box now. Whoops. Oh. Here you need to. I'm probably not doing this in the most efficient way, but you get the you get the gist. Um, you get your text in. Okay, so there we have some text um, and then again I'm going to put some below so I drag the text box below and then I'll go to my Word document uh, and I'll go for the next one. Copy that across. It behaves a bit oddly when you first try to put it in. Maybe the best thing to do is actually to widen this to start with. Um, so I'm going to do Command V, it's sort of Control V. It sometimes doesn't happen straight away. There we go. So there it is again, and um, I'm going to center it, bold it, and um, put the size I want in here. So so that gives you an idea of how to to do that. And then I do apply changes. Um, when I close this, I can fiddle around with the layout to make it how I want. Um, thinking about so so there we go. So it looks a bit crude and I know that the the um the lines aren't quite as they should be but it, it gives you the idea and then again if you were going on to your next page you would then go back up here, you'd go to your assets and you'd pick uh the next uh the next picture. I think it might be this one. There we go, yeah. So it's Hattie the Hedgehog. So here I am bringing in uh, the next picture. I'm placing it there. Um, and you can do things like if you want, if it's not quite right or you want to zoom in some more, you can do crop and you can just go like this and zoom in so you get a bit more detail. Um, I mean, certainly I found looking at some of my pictures here that I know ultimately I'm going to have to um, revisit them because there's, you know, some of them are a little bit too, the, the shots are a bit too far away. Uh, but for now, this will do for demonstration purposes. Um, here's one later on, bringing the picture in, and there's the hedgehog um, uh, crying. <laughs> <laughs> the fox was very nice, so he didn't eat him. So that sort of gives you an idea of um, how easy it is to put the um, pictures in place and the fact that you can zoom in on them. You can also sort of change, I think you can change their shape, but I'm probably not using the right tool. This is why I'm saying you sort of, I'm trying to give you a, a very basic uh, demonstration. But so now let's go and see how we would um, add some sound. I'm just going to show you how you can have basic audio added to the book um, each time the child, um, each time the page loads. So what you do is, I'm on the page, I'm on my opening page, Ferdinand Fox and the Hedgehog, uh, and what I would do is I go in this, uh, in the assets area, from the drop down list, I go to audio, which is already selected. I've numbered these all so I know what they are. What you do is you drag over the audio file for this page. It doesn't have to be on the page, it can sit outside here. So that's selected and you go over to, there are two two different areas over here. One's called inspector uh, and one's called actions. And what we want to do is add an action to this audio. So you go to actions and, and you say what is it that triggers the action and in this case it's going to be the load of the page. And then we say to ourselves okay if the page loads what is the action associated with this object and so we add the new option. So we add the action and in this case it's going to be play audio or it should be play audio object apparently. Um, anyway, so there we go. Play audio and the target uh, in this case is called self. I'm not quite sure why it is but it's the thing that's selected here but always look in the drop down list because um, it might well be showing something that says audio one. In this case it doesn't but anyway let me just show you how that works. So actually this page is now ready to go and you can preview it very simply just the current page by clicking here. Ferdinand Fox and the Hedgehog. So there straight away we've seen that we've added audio to that page. 
Just before I carry on to tell you about how to um, record read aloud, uh, just to say there's an error right at the beginning. I tell you to drag over a an audio file into here. In fact, you don't need to do that, and that becomes obvious as I as I continue. Um, I'm not quite sure how. I'm just inserting this clip into the video. It may look a bit odd, uh, but we'll be back to normal in just a moment. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, show you how you can do read aloud relatively simply. Um, so you come onto your page with the text on it that you've already added. Uh, you then drag over the audio file which you've named more clearly than I have, um, but I'm pretty sure it's this one. We'll soon find out if it's not. So that's and that, and it calls it audio one now. And so what we do now is we do something called read aloud. So you you go up to, or maybe we don't need it there to begin with. Hold on. I think we do. Yes, we need it associated with the page. Immediately, it's already found the text that's on the page, um, and it's saying okay. Ha let, let's do read aloud. Um, and so provided you want all of this text to be in the read aloud, you leave those selected. If for some reason you had some text down here you didn't want to be part of it, you would just select it here and click that minus button. But that, that's not what we're doing. So we're then going to go on to next. And um, this is a little bit complicated. It's <coughs> The idea is that you can choose how you want to break the text up when you are um, recording. So you might have um, each individual word highlighted, but I think that's a lot of work, or you might have blocks of words highlighted. Um, and the idea is that this will um, these symbols will break the text ready for chunks to be recorded. Now, um, left as it is, we would end up with the whole of this highlight uh, and the whole of this down to the comma highlighted because what this is saying to you is it will highlight the text in blocks and it will, where it's split by a comma or a full stop. So because we don't have any punctuation up here and I would want to um, break the text up more, um, what I've done is uh, a workaround which is to add in some invisible um, dividers. So in my case what I found was by adding a little um, apostrophe. So what you do here is you go in here and you say you also want to make an apostrophe. There's an apostrophe is going to be um, at plus. That's going to be one of the dividers. And then keeping that where it is I go back into the text here and I say okay Ferdinand Fox and I add an apostrophe here but I also highlight it in white which I know is very fiddly but such is life. Um, right down here so highlight that in white okay um, hit okay um, and I also would make it a smaller size just so the spacing doesn't go up but I think I'll just do the principle of this here if I just then copy that Ferdinand Fox trotted down past the park where the seesaws and swings, let's say we put that there, put one there, I'll do paste, oops it's kept it black, okay so I have to make it white again um, and it remembers what you've done so that's quite useful. I'm just going to add in um, another apostrophe here and highlight it, oops, now I've put it in the wrong place now, where the seesaws and that should say swings and I'll put the apostrophe there and highlight it white. Stood still in the dark. Now the spacing isn't quite right there, you can get around that by, by just making these a smaller size. I'll try reducing that down a bit, say to 10. Uh, there we go, and then perhaps this one I should do the same very quickly. So, right, so I do apply changes, and and it doesn't sort of say it has, but it has. Um, you would then go down and do the same down here. His magnificent tail, let's put a, an apostrophe in there. Again, maybe I'll unbold it and make it white and now it's defaulting to recent so it's quite good the software at 
oops and now I put the whole lot white which I didn't mean to let's quickly get that back to black it's magnificent tail just check that's still highlighted yes sailed along in the light and then we want another one here um, apostrophe fiddly I know and I'm sure there must be better ways for this to be done but for now we have to live with it of the street light above and the comma will be picked up which lit up the night so apply changes close that down now if we go back to as we were read aloud remember where we are remember we've now got this comma in and what that means is anything that's here will divide the text you have to be a little bit careful if um, you've got a question mark in a place where you don't want the text to divide. If that's the case, you would s highlight it, as I said before, and get rid of it. Um, anyway, on we go to next. Right, it can generate some very weird um, sounding audio for you, uh, but I've obviously got my own. Ah, oh, I've done this wrong. So actually, I don't need that to be there. I'll put that back later. So basically, as I said, it was um, this one here so I go OK and then I'm ready to go this is where the fun starts I'm hoping I can do this um, you press the down buttons here so watch this Ferdinand Fox trotted down past the park where the seesaws and swings stood still in the dark his magnificent tail sailed along in the light of the street lamp above, which lit up the night. Great. So I've now recorded that, and because I've been doing it, uh, had a bit of a practice um, setting up the, the book, <laughs> I've got a bit better in it, at it than I was. So let's just, what's great about this, it lets you preview it straight away. So we can do that now. Ferdinand Fox trotted down past the park, where the seesaws and swings stood still in the dark. His magnificent tail sailed along in the light of the street lamp above, which lit up the night. Yes, fantastic. So so there you can see um, it's a little bit fiddly putting in the the dividers that you want. Um, but and you can sync it again as many times as you need to, and assure, I can assure you I I did do that. So I hope that gives you a reasonably clear idea of how relatively easy it is to um, do read along with this uh, software. It's very intuitive. Um, I incorrectly dragged the audio onto there. I didn't need to do that. Um, uh, that was what I did for the opening page, but it obviously didn't affect anything. And I'll just delete that from there now. The last thing I want to show you how to do is how you can um, make on-touch animation appear, as I showed you in the example at the beginning. Um, bear with me if there's some edits in this because it's a little bit, it's not too complicated, but it's me trying to remember um, how to do things in the right sequence. So the first thing I need to do is to get onto this page all the things that I want to appear. So I go over to my, I think it's my assets, no. Uh, it's the objects, sorry, even I can't remember. And the first thing I want to do is to make this area touch sensitive. And for that, they've got a thing called a gesture organizer. So what you do is you drag that over onto the fox, cause, and, and I, it's like having a hot spot, if you like. So this is where if a child touches the fox on the iPad, um, oops, this area will be sensitive and it will trigger an action of some sort and in our case so with that was from objects I'm now going to go over to my assets and pick out from my not from my audio but from the images what it is that we want um, to appear and that's going to be this word bubble but while it's selected now we all know that when the page appears we don't want people to see this so over in here we have two um, we're in the actions area at the moment but if we go into inspector it knows this is selected and what I want to say to it is that by default this is going to be hidden and the minute I do it what I love about this software it's very intuitive it's reminding you that this is effectively hidden at the moment 
The third component that's going to make up this action, as we know, is going to be the audio. And this is the one where you literally just drag the audio. And if I go down here, there's my word that says fox one I prepared earlier. I'm just going to stick that there. I know that's the audio from the name of the file that says Fox. So we've got all those three things in place. Um, and then the next thing we're now going to do is to get the actions going. Now what we want to do is use our base our base gesture organizer as the sort of parent of this series of actions which are going to appear in a string. So that's that's selected. Um, I'm looking at notes here just to remind myself. So we then go, so we go over to the actions. And the first thing I, by default, you'll see that it's actually on touchdown. Touchdown meaning when you press the iPad. So um, that's on touchdown already. And so we're, what we're basically saying here, you know, as opposed to on shake or on swipe left, on touchdown, I'm going to add a new action. And the first act, and the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to make that object appear. Um, so if we go down here, it will be show object. Now, which object? There's no selection. What you need to do is go down to the target and down here you can see it's recognized all of the objects. So this is the, this is what we want to appear. So we um, we do that and actually this fade duration means fade in duration. Um, I, on that sample I showed you earlier I thought it appeared a little bit too quickly so I'm just going to, I might muck things up here but I'm just going to put one second on that. Um, having now understood that's fade in duration. So that that's that's the first thing that's going to happen. Um, the next thing is we want it uh, not only for that to appear for, but for the audio now to play. So we're going to now add a new action uh, and that new action is going to be to play audio. So we go down here and we play audio and um, it's it's this first option that you choose and but again which there's no selection that's why it's saying it's grey um, so we go down here and it that's the only one there so you pick it if you had several different um, things going on on this page you would obviously select the audio file that you want um, so that's that one um, right now this next action is not so obvious and that is wait so we go down to wait. I'm not sure what happens if we don't do this. It's got time to wait one second. That just basically means that everything will stay there, that the audio will play and the image will stay on the page for one second. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is for that object to disappear again. So we add another action and um, that is to hide the object again hide now it says self here which is slightly confusing me I think no we don't want it to be self we want it to be the image that is hidden now I think just check here that that we're all there so now let's all keep fingers crossed if I go up here to preview and again this is what's great about this software it lets you check out that everything's working there and then um, preview the current page Good. Now let's try Fox. Great. And actually what's interesting about that is it's faded in a bit slower. Fox. Although my audio isn't, the timing isn't quite right. There. And obviously I could then on that page have of course added my read aloud to go along with it. So now this is a very crude um, example to show you of what can be done but if I if I now abandon this I'm not going to try and do the whole project but I, if I go back to um, Ferdinand Fox and the Hedgehog again bear with this because it really is this really is a um, work in progress and some of the pictures are not detailed enough um, but perhaps I'll just take you through the full preview oh and but before I do that to say that you can do fantastic things like sharing it on Wi-Fi so here if you click here share on Wi-Fi 
you can actually send it to your Wi-Fi. So it's doing that now, as you can see. Sorry, it, it puts up um, a web address or a scanner, or if not, it gives you an address that you can input onto your iPad, which I've done. And um, and then and then it literally within two seconds it's on your your iPad and I'll I'll get this in a moment and actually I'll show that to you. Then you click click stop sharing once you've shared it and you can also put it onto your iPhone. Um, but here I'm just going to show you how you can also preview it the whole project right here and on your screen. Um, here we go then. Ferdinand Fox and the Hedgehog. Ah, okay. Ferdinand Fox trotted down past the park where the seesaws and swings stood still in the dark. His magnificent tail sailed along in the light of the street lamp above which lit up the night. With tongue hanging out and eyes beady sharp he trotted on past heading into the dark. Sometimes it doesn't The read. path that he took led down to his den by a leaning tree with a warbling wren. And this is an example of where the picture needs work. I need to zoom in a bit more, um, create a few more interesting animals here. Um, but that's what's good about working with this software. You can see where you can make improvements because you can see straight away where something is not going to be quite right. That very same night, seeking bugs with her snout, Hattie the Hedgehog was out and about. As soon as she smelled the scent of a fox, she scampered to hide in an old soggy box. And here, you know, for example, if you wanted to, you could add an action here that when you touch the bug, it, there might be a bug noise. But you can also do other actions which are um, to make it rotate. You'd have to then add um, a separate ping on top of it. But there, there's all sorts of fun things that you can do. And that's what I was talking about. If you know, if you know a lot about Photoshop and InDesign, you know, this is going to be fantastic for you. Here's another example where the picture might not have enough detail on it. As she pricked up her prickles and sniffed all around, she saw something move in front on the ground. A tiny dark ball scuttled this way and that, grunting and snorting in satisfied chat. As the shape moved in closer, with horror she saw her tiny son Edmund, who'd slipped out the door. The scent of the fox grew stronger and nearer. She gave a shrill cry, but her son didn't hear her. On turning the bend, Ferdinand spied, playful young Edmund, he'd nowhere to hide. Fox shrieked Edmund and curled on his side. Ferdinand froze, his mouth open wide. Why, what a sweet hedgehog, he finally said. Why aren't you home, all tucked up in bed? Edmund lay shaking, a small prickly ball, not daring to look, not daring to call. This Ferdinand picture smiled. will be replaced. I'm off now, it Looks he like said. a Lipizzano pony. <laughs> Don't stay out too late. You should rest your head. As he rounded the corner that led to his house, Hattie crept out, meek as a mouse. With nose gleaming bright like ebony glass, she shuffled through leaves and over the grass. Why, Edmund, she said, what am I to do? How lucky you are, Fox didn't eat you. I'm sorry, sniffed Edmund, pouting his lip. He uncurled his ball and wiggled his hip. But oh, what a kind fox! You heard what he said. I certainly did. Now, off to your bed. OK, and um, the next page, I just want to show you how I was able to play around and mock up a, an end page. I sort of felt my way around, but again, I just wanted to say I'm not someone who does lots of Photoshop, but I was able to work this out. Oh, no, sorry, this is the last page. I've forgotten this, sorry have this one first. This is the end of the story. As she kissed Ed goodnight, had he thought of the fox she'd spied in the dark from inside the box. 
He really was special, of that she was sure. What luck it was this night, Ed slipped out the door. OK, so that's the fox story. And what's clear to me is the close-up pictures work a lot better. So those are things that I'll, I'll review before I um, finally release it. Um, but I just wanted to show you on the last page, I played around and came up with a sort of end promo message, uh, which people can play if they want to. Um, and I did it very much by playing around. It was very easy to work out how to do it, even to create the background and the layers. So this is what it looks like. I dragged in one of the pictures. Uh, and created a background and then um, I even managed to you know, add this Hi, message. Hi this is Karen Inglis just to say I hope you enjoyed Ferdinand Fox and the Hedgehog and to let you know that you can get free colouring so, sheets you and know, some fun some, right? the, the sort of promo stuff there and so you on, and, and I managed to use the actions to, to make it stop and start. Game material. You know, my web there's one there's one of the actions that says pause uh, and stop pause and start, pause and start. So it's, once you've done it a few times, it's actually fairly intuitive. Um, if I close that now, um, I think that gives you a feel for it. I'm going to put this on pause because I just wanted to show you it on the iPad to show that it actually works. OK, um, here it is on the iPad. I'm not really sure whether you're going to be able to see this, but if I click up here, it has the, um, you know, the built-in Apple. Ferdinand Fox and the Hedgehog. I hope you can see that. And if I click, if I do here. Ferdinand Fox trotted down past the park, where the seesaws and swings stood still in the dark. So you can see that it really works and that's me having been obviously it's not published yet but it all works and and all the app when it goes to the iBook store you know you've got this facility to be able to jump to any page that you want this all works so I'm just very impressed I have to say with how well designed this all is it's called Pubcoder so if you google pubcoder.com you can get a free trial um, and um, I would just say have fun go and have a play around with it if you but but you know with the you know with you know with the sort of proviso that you um, have all your artwork and uh, you know what you're doing um, and also uh, just to say that it's not just to iBooks that you can publish it there's all sorts of formats I think you saw on the way in and there's also the facility to um, create co-editions and so on and so forth but I, I've just sort of scratched the surface really just to sort of whet your appetites so I hope this is helpful and um, advance apologies if this little bit um, uh, sewn together when you when you get this presentation all right um, happy indie recon